Alrighty, Pickle. It is time for Helpful Honda Mailbag Friday. The North Texas Honda dealers want to help you score on award-winning Hondas like the rugged mm. and reliable 2023 Honda mm. Ridgeline. Stop by your helpful Honda dealer today or visit ntxhondadealers.com to learn more. Honda, I know that uh, new car season is coming. The mm -hmm. 2024s are about to roll out. I know this because I Googled it. And so if you're looking to unload one of those rugged and reliable Honda Ridgelines from 2023, you know those vintage ones. Mm -hmm. I will gladly take that. I mean, the old, yeah, I mean, they're... Who would want those? Wink. <laughs> I'd be happy to take one off your hands. It's Helpful Honda Mailback Friday. We uh, appreciate you getting your questions in um, on Wednesday. That's when we ask for them. Uh, again, this is just a whole hook to get you to watch twice, Wednesday and Friday, see if we answer your questions. We do have a variety of questions, right, Pickle? Yes, we do. We'll start off with, uh, I'm sorry to everyone else who watches the Wednesday show, but our best friend, Mm. as a part of the Wednesday mm -hmm. show, and that is Mr. Greg Powers. He follows instructions, and he gets his questions he does. in on Wednesday. Be more like Greg Powers. Uh, Just always. Not even like... <laughs> that's, a, that's a life advice. General general advice. Every day, not just Wednesdays. Be yes. more like Greg Powers. Who is the biggest threat to beat Carthage? It's a great question. That's a question we ask about every this. year. It is. So Carthage is the number one team in 4A Division Two. Carthage is, curiously, if you're interested, not the number one team in our computer rankings in 4A Division Two. In fact, they're not the number two or three team in our rankings. They're fourth behind Wimberley, Cuero, and Belleville. Now, here is why I take those with a grain of salt. All three of those teams are on the other side of the bracket. And uh, Pickle, I'm gonna just uh, ask you a question. I, you know, I, I, I don't mean to put you on the spot here. Mm -hmm. uh, Scott Surratt has been to nine state championship games. Mm -hmm. uh, how many of those state championship games uh, has he lost? Um. The answer to that would be none of them. He's oh. won all nine. He's nine and out in state championship games. So if we're judging based on history, then Carthage needs to get beat before they the state championship game. Stadium. Right, before they get to AT&T Stadium. And I don't think that's necessarily a, a, a bad way of thinking about it. So right now, with all due respect, for the sake of this argument, we're going to eliminate the right side of the bracket. <laughs> So it's going to have to come from Region 1 or Region 2. Now, Region 2 is loaded. By the way, that, that would mean that Silsby would not beat them in the title game, even though I do think Silsby has some playmakers like Draylon Miller to really challenge them. Here are three teams that I think are the biggest threat to Carthage. One of them is Pleasant Grove from within their own district, um, I think, or rather, yeah, uh, no, within their own region. Um, Pleasant Grove is physical. They are athletic. And they're not scared of Carthage. No. They've played them before. So right now, I would still pick Carthage against Pleasant Grove, but they would be a threat. I also think that we have to consider Gilmer a threat. Now, Gilmer's had some defensive issues, and that might be problematic. But that is a game that, again, within their own region may be a challenge. And then you're looking at teams from within Region 1. Now, I think Region 1 is um, down this year mm -hmm. uh, in 4A Division 2. But if you're looking for a favorite... Maybe it's a team like Graham or Monahans that could challenge them. But right now, I would say Pleasant Grove would be the team that I would categorize as the biggest threat to Carthage. Again, they could see a really good team in the title game. Wimberley's a really good team. Cuero's a really good team. Belleville's a really good team. Silsby's a really good team. Hampshire Finette is a really good team. But if you're asking me based on the historical data we have, I think Pleasant Grove would be the team that best fits that that bill as a team that can challenge Carthage in 4A Division 2. It's funny because one of our other questions was now that four, or Region 1 and 4A Division 2 mm -hmm. is up in the air, who are the favorites in the region from the that yeah. versus the beginning of this season? I mean, it's wide open. It uh, really is. I like Graham. Um, Graham's probably the safe pick right now, but I also don't know that they've necessarily been challenged. Like, their best win is over Glen Rose, mm -hmm. and that's a down Glen Rose team, right? Um and honestly, they're probably not going to get challenged in t until they get into the playoffs because I think they're going to be favored in every one of their games. Uh, the close, I mean, when they play Hershey in the opener, that'll be interesting. They have to go to Sweetwater, which is no fun, but I think they'll be favored in all those games. Um, so Canyon West Plains could be a little bit of a sleeper. I think you're spot on. Uh, Canyon West Plains is the other one. Canyon West Plains is the team that, if it's not Cuero, maybe it's West Plains, or, or I'm going to keep banging the drum. Monahans has got the juice, guys. Mm -hmm. They've got Chino Navarrete, their quarterback. He's a he's a dog. 
he's got that dog in him. Um, so I would say those are the three right now. West Plains, Monahans, and Graham, in some order, are your top three in Region 1 right now as where we sit. What is next, Pickle? Um, let's see. Is there concern that Manville has become an average playoff contender av- after having both Shadow Creek and Iowa Colony pull from Manville over the past several years? I mean... Yeah. Yeah. I, there's no other way to put that. I think that's why when Kirk Martin wanted to come back, they jumped at the opportunity. Yeah. An opportunity to return us to the glory days. Mm-hmm. Um, because it's one thing to have Shadow Creek pull from them. Yes. To split it in half is one thing. Now we're seeing the dividends that it's being paid in Iowa Colony, now mm-hmm. a state-ranked team, and it's one of those things that you look at it and say, okay, one school polling and splitting it in half is one thing, but splitting it in a third is – is just now it could make the district more fun yes because there's going to be a lot of good competition the level of competition might just not been what it had been during manville's heyday yeah when you look at alvin isd i mean manville did like manville had for a long time when they were going to the state state championship game right Mm -hmm. manville had in many respects a stranglehold especially on the playmakers Mm -hmm. offensive playmakers they don't have that anymore they're big time playmakers at shadow creek they're big time playmakers at iowa colony I still think that if you took an Alvin, Alvin, Alvin ISD is one of those districts that if you took an Alvin ISD All Star team, mm-hmm. I'm I am really confident they're going to be oh, yeah. playing very Up deep there. in the playoffs. The talent didn't dissipate within the district, but it did get divided a number of ways. And so I think there should be concern that Manville could fall back to just being still a playoff team because mm-hmm. there's still good talent there, and Kirk Martin's a heck of a coach. But as far as like going to state championship games and being like a big time statewide contender. I think there's, it, I think it's reasonable to have concerns that those days are are numbered or over. Right. Um. You know. Which again can be looked at as a good thing if you look at it from a district wide perspective. It's kind of like if you look at 196A of Katie's dominance yes. forever. It was like once Tompkins kind of started pushing Katie, then yeah. it got fun. When Peyto kind of started pushing, it got fun, and it's just like sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes that is a good thing. But it, I, I think that that is a fair question and one that we will be monitoring over the next few years of of the effect of the expansion in, in Alvin ISD and just the growth because it is it is substantive. What's next, Pickle? Um, let's see. Which district do y'all think is going to be the biggest dumpster fire? Mm. And that doesn't mean necessarily bad play. No. It meant for no, figuring exactly. out playoff spots this season. I, I know exactly who you're talking about. Um, I mean, you mentioned 196A. That's mm-hmm. one that I think is going to be uh, fun. Uh, and and could get really wild down the stretch. I will throw another one out there. Um, keep an eye, and this was this was weird last year, but keep an eye on the on. I always want to tell you to keep an eye on San Antonio. Mm-hmm. San Antonio stuff gets real weird, and when you go to five A Division two, especially the Alamo Heights district. Okay. Um. Alamo Heights, Harlandale, Burbank, McCollum, Jefferson, Sam Houston, Lanier. I mean, throw in Highlands, throw in, you know, Brackenridge. I know they're they're winless at this point. That is, I want to say that district had like six teams within a game of one another mm-hmm. at the finish. Like that that district just all beats each other up. Mm-hmm. And so it's going to come, and, and your, those districts, especially because it's a 10-team district, if you have... Like, if everything plays to paper, everything's fine. But all it takes is, like, one, one upset. Slip up. Like, yep. all it takes is, like, Sam Houston beating Harlandale, mm-hmm. right? I don't know if that game's happened or not. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just speculating. All that, hap- all that needs to happen, and then it's just, like, chaos. Chaos. Like cascading <laughs> chaos. Yep. So, 14-5A Division two would be my pick. That is one that is going to be weird. Um, another one up here in the DFW, I think 5-6-A mm-hmm. is chaos right now. And now let me preface it with the bottom three teams I think are pretty solidified. But when you get to the rest of the five yeah. teams, especially after Prosper beat Geyer, that really put a wrench in it. Because we were talking about how if Allen didn't take care of business, we would know by this week, maybe next week, that they would be the ones missing the playoff. Yeah. But now Denton Geyer has gone and dropped one in district. They've dropped a couple on the year. 
year. Um, so 5-6A win the top five teams fighting for that. Whoever fights for that fourth spot will be very interesting. Well, and, and you're exactly right. In these next two weeks, mm -hmm. Allen and Braswell and Allen and Rock Hill. Yeah, that's very Those are, and then when does Braswell play Rock Hill? Let me see that. They, play, they already played them. So, so Braswell beat Rock Hill. Yes. So things especially get weird. Well, let me, let me rephrase. If Braswell beats Allen this week, they've got to feel like they're gonna win. They're gonna make the playoffs, like because they've right. got they're the all wins. two and they've two got right the wins now. Over the teams they need to have them over. Mm -hmm. If Allen beats Braswell and then Rock Hill beats Allen, then it gets weird, and then you have this just this battle royale for that final fourth spot, assuming mm -hmm. Prosper, Geyer, and McKinney are in the playoffs. So yeah, and then by the way, God forbid, like Geyer beat McKinney and McKinney beat you know, um, beat Prosper, something mm -hmm. like that. So there's, I think you're right. Five, six, eight, I think is very combustible as well. Well, and that leads us into another one of the questions. Someone asked, do you see McKinney high going through the last two games of the season as eight and O oh, playoffs before the playoffs? Um, yeah. I, so, so what this, this person is referring to right now, McKinney's four and oh. mm -hmm. looking good. They play McKinney Boyd this week. They Heavy will beat McKinney Boyd. Yeah. I would be shocked if they didn't beat McKinney Boyd. Then they play Braswell. They're going to be favored over Braswell. Mm -hmm. Open date. Then they play Allen. Now, that's, been that's a very Achilles personal game. Them. Yeah, It's a very personal game, especially for the McKinney staff. Mm -hmm. That's at home. That's in McKinney. Right now, I'd install McKinney as a favorite. Yeah. Right? So that's 7-0, and right? Then they're at Rock Hill, mm -hmm. right? Should win that So one. you want to get Rock, about Rock Hill, they should win that game. So then they're eight and zero, heading into at Geyer, at Geyer, and home for Prosper. So yeah, I mean you're gonna, you could really have a situation where we know who the top three teams are, like Geyer, Prosper, and Allen. Or, I'm sorry, Geyer, Prosper, and McKinney. Mm -hmm. And then those final two weeks will finally sort out exactly how things go. Mm -hmm. Because McKinney, McKinney's schedule is decidedly backloaded. Yes, decidedly. So that is a very keen point. Uh, there's a good chance that I would say the most reasonable expectation right now would be McKinney enters week nine or week 10 rather at, at eight. No, yeah. going into Geyer and Geyer looking at their schedule. Yeah, probably. I mean, they've got the, the they play Allen the, the week before. So, you know, you don't know, but I would say that they're likely to be seven and one and that'll be likely if they, if they keep winning Geyer's probably back in the rankings and that could be a Geyer's two and matchup. two. Geyer's 2-2. Two two. Mm -hmm. Geyer's 2-2. Two two. They've got a loss to Alito, too. So, anyway, keep an eye on that. 5-6-8's six, got some, some chaos agents. What's next? Um, who are you concerned about after four weeks of the season? <laughs> Lancaster? Lancaster. Glenn Rose. Katie Tompkins. Yes. Who else am I concerned about? I don't know. That's a good question. Um, Katie Tompkins is a really good Tompkins one. is uh, that's a team that I'm I'm concerned about. Judson, concerned about Judson. Yeah, they just they're just they're not having luck figuring it they're out. Just inconsistent. Lubbock that. Coronado, concerned about Lubbock Coronado. Um, I'm trying to think of like small schools, um, teams that I was high on that now I'm. Uh, yeah, you know what? It's it's a minor concern. Like, it's still like they're going to make the playoffs. I'm not concerned they're going to miss the playoffs. But Hawley, I'm concerned about Hawley's offense. Yeah. I'm the concerned about Hawley's offense. Losing Austin be, Compton. I think it's huge. It's showing. It's, it's really huge. showing. It's so important what they do. Um, I'm concerned about Hawley. Um, I'm concerned about whoever plays Duncanville. <laughs> Every Seems week. fair. Just every week. That's just like a personal safety concern. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, those would be. That's a that's a short list of teams that I'm that I'm concerned about. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's do one or two more. Okay. Um, what is a mascot you wouldn't want to cross paths with? Pied Piper. Dude, swole, that guy is swole. Piper. Swole Piper. Oh my that god. Jacked. Honest to God, too. You know I love him, but I would not want to come in contact with the swole bee. If no. the swole bee was buzzing around, no. I would I would be no. terrified. We wear that shirt out of 
deference and respect for yes the that bee. way when the swole bee comes up i can be like, like no, 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 no. wait i like big you big i am a fan <laughs> i i am a fan yes um i think i'm more like it's funny because it's easy to be like oh i'm scared of like the psja bear like mm-hmm. I am, yeah, I don't want to fight a bear. Uh, you don't want to fight any bear. No, like no I think that's the thing. If I see a bee come up, I'm like, oh, okay, it's annoying, but I'm not like, yeah, bee. I yeah. see that bee come up, we got issues. Right. But any type of bear, I'm gonna be like, hey, brother, let's stay, uh, you know, 400 yards apart here. Yeah. Um. Or like an elk, Stratford. Mm-hmm. Like what you want to talk out? about mm-hmm. an animal that like you need to be at least 300 yards away from when you see them, an elk. Yeah. Elk are terrifying. Uh, all the snakes. I don't yeah. want to do any of the snakes. Rattlers. Um, not interested in, in, in messing with any of the snakes. Um, is anyone, this is, this is like, I'm, I'm trying to think this through. Is anyone a javelina? Yes, there's one. Isn't there one? Like, a and Kingsville's the javelina. Oh, okay, maybe that's what I was thinking. Like, that's what keeps coming to my mind. But, like, is, is there one, is there a high school that's javelina? I don't know. Which is crazy to me, but... Um, well, and then there's the other ones like uh, the Progresso red ants yeah. or the mesquite skeeters, like mosquitoes and ants. Like I have no desire to come in contact yeah. with them. It's not that I'm scared. Oh, I have this wrong. There are two. Uh, Crystal City. Oh, yeah. And PSJA Southwest are both the Havilinas. I thought that there was one down in the RGV. Neither one of them. Don't want to mess with you. No. Not interested in that. Kind of mean. Um, and then. In the, in the Lano Yellow Jacket. Sting Did I ever tell you about my running with yellow jackets? No. So when I was living in Georgia, um, we were out at a friend's like cabin, house, something like that. And we we're walking through the woods. And I don't know if you know this about yellow jackets. Maybe you do. I don't know how, how deep you're not. I would like to think jackets. that I am well versed in yellow jackets. You know, you know they nest on the ground. Yes, I did know that. They nest on the ground. They don't hang in trees. They like mm-hmm. like a, you're thinking of a beehive. It's not a beehive. They nest on the ground. And so I was walking through the forest with my buddy. As one does. And I stepped on oh, a no. yellow jacket hive. And so suddenly, like, I start getting stung. Like, one. I'm like, ow, ow, ow. And then you, like, look around, and there's this, like, swarm of yellow jackets. And so we, I remember this very distinctly. Like, we took off running and, like, jumped into his pool. Yeah. <laughs> that he had it at the cabin, stuff like that. That was a terrifying moment. I, so I'm not scared of one yellow jacket. But a swarm. I am scared of multiple yellow jackets. Well, the other thing that I have an issue with, which is... So, at middle school, we were the daubers. Uh-huh, which is a... A uh, mud dauber. Yeah. You know where those nest... Mud daubers don't sting. Mm-mm. So, I was always like, this is the least intimidating thing. You're because, just annoying. Like, yeah, we... And that, you know, that checks out. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, actually. <laughs> Honestly. Actually, some... Okay. some well done, Lano ISD. <laughs> actually... I would still like to petition for us to be the Lano Llamas. Like, yeah. the double L is a miss. You can... The fact Every that time never... that's not the first time you've done you've shown I know, that to me. And I'm so this mad. is a long standing like thing for you. But like It's excellent. <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic. It is good. Alright, one more. Um, what's an unusual food blend that you've tried? I don't necessarily So I think it's like you know, like, you know, peanut butter and Oh, okay. You know, oh, my parents love uh peanut butter and marshmallow cream sandwiches. Mm. They think it's the best thing ever. I still haven't really tried it. Seems sweet. Yeah. I can't do it. Seems really sweet. The, even the jam is too much. Let me ask you a me. question. When you went over to um, Europe. Yes. Because they do, they do the French fries with mayo. Mm-hmm. Right? Over there in Europe. And yeah. Especially like you get into like, like you go to like when my wife and I went to Denmark. Mm-hmm. They like big fries with ketchup, with mayonnaise thing. Did you give that a go? Yeah. I, I'm fine with fries with mayonnaise. I like mayonnaise a lot. So I'm okay mm-hmm. with it. Yeah. Now, do I prefer other stuff? On the on the last week of the trip, I finally found a bottle of what they deemed American ranch sauce. American. Oh, yeah. I instantly went and ordered wings. I was so excited. I had gone like six weeks without American and? ranch sauce. Oh, it was terrible, but it was enough ranch to make it okay. There was a... Um, do you watch... Uh, uh, or do, do you... Did you watch uh, Ted Lasso? No, I have not. Okay. There's a scene late in the series where Ted Lasso is feeling kind of homesick and there's like an American restaurant mm-hmm. that he goes to. I think they're in Germany for like a, a game or something. But he um and he's or Amsterdam and he goes to this American restaurant. And he like sits down and it's like all these like 
like Dutch people trying to put on American accents and like they come over and, like all like, all these sauces and stuff and it's like all these things that like you imagine Europeans think of Americans and stuff like that. Yeah. It's really funny, but like they had like the ranch sauce like, Amazing. The thing about it and they were just like, Well, I don't get this. Like <laughs> this doesn't make any sense. To well, me. they don't make any uh, sense. Food combo, I don't know. See, um, I always like and some people I know this is fairly common. I always like cat I love catfish and grits. Like for breakfast, mm-hmm. catfish and grits is a big one. Did your parents now? Well, I guess you're you you were never a sweet person. Mm-hmm. Um, if you guys had birthday cake, would your parents let you have birthday cake in, for breakfast the next morning? Uh, I'm sure they would have. I don't think I ever asked. Because we always oh, that's go ahead. a big thing for my wife. She always wants to do like if we've got leftover cake or pie. She's like, what if I just did this for breakfast? breakfast. I'm like you're an adult. <laughs> She's like, I know. Which is exactly why, why I, I can do it. Do it. Yes. Um, my granny makes really good homemade chocolate chip cookies, and she mm. would always let me dip my, uh, like, I would get a cookie because I could dip it in her coffee in the morning. That ruled. That was really, as it took down the sweetness. Um, yeah, that's, that's. The weird thing that we always did was when we were getting up to go on vacation and we were an hour and a half from the closest airport, that would be Austin. So if we were leaving at like a 6 a.m. flight, we were getting up at about 3 a.m. because we had an hour and a half drive plus getting to the airport early. So we would and we would always need something in our stomach, but it was always a mad dash to try and get out mm-hmm. of the house and stuff as a family of four. And uh, so my brother and I would always have the day we would leave for vacation, a corn dog. It didn't matter what time in the morning it was, but we could we could heat it up and take it in the car. We didn't risk spilling like it got us a little something so we didn't get car sick on the way down to Austin because it's twisty mm-hmm. curvy in the hill country um so corn dogs at like 3 a.m were always our 3 favorite corn dogs. yeah that was that meant we were on vacation huh okay yeah that's it's a good trick for your boys if you're ever hustling to get out of the house popping a corn yeah. dog and let's roll because they can eat it in the car yeah i would say that like my kids are very much into ketchup and nothing like, okay. just like <laughs> right end stuff well like that. that might be a little bit messier in the car but to yeah, each their own yeah that's uh, tough anyway uh that is helpful honda mailbag friday that's gonna do for us thanks so much for watching that video if you would like more and to be notified when they come out go ahead and click that subscribe button right down there you can also watch texas football today every day live at noon on texasfootball.com facebook twitch and right here on youtube for more of the best coverage of texas football in the lone star state go to texasfootball.com slash subscribe.